Today, we are going to discuss real estate investors who use whole life insurance. This video was sparked from a conversation I had with an existing client earlier this week who has some rather large whole life insurance policies. He has seven figures in existing cash value. He uses his policies solely for real estate, meaning he leverages the cash value to purchase additional real estate. He has a real estate portfolio presently valued over $30 million. So he's actively involved in real estate and he's very successful with what he does. However, in talking with him, he had some items that he was really frustrated about with respect to whole life insurance and using policies for loans. And that frustration really came from a lack of transparency. What he mentioned to me was this. He said, Steve, when I try to do research on seeing how I can use my policy to buy and sell real estate, but specifically when I take loans, I see examples like this. I'll see someone show a policy that has $1 million in cash value. Then they take a loan of $200,000 and the individual giving that presentation will show, here's the compounding on $1 million, which is 40 or $50,000 that year. And you paid loan interest of $10,000, making it look like a positive spread, which it is true that the compounding on the $1 million in that example, if it was $40,000, and then I borrowed $200,000 and I had $10,000 in loan interest. I earned 40, I only paid 10, so that's a positive spread. But he was frustrated. I said, yeah, you know, that frustrates me too. What I like to show in a case like that is an additional scenario displaying what would it look like if I take that same policy, but increase the loan from $200,000 to $800,000. Do I still have that same positive spread? The answer is no. And we're gonna demonstrate that with some numbers today. But the purpose of me mentioning that is here's a seasoned real estate investor who has whole life insurance and he's used his policy, I should say policy successfully over the years. He's got some larger policies that he started before him and I even connected, before he began to work with our company. So he's, he's had a lot of success there, but at the same time, transparency lacks, or I should say he's trying to understand it really to the fullest degree, which will make him even more comfortable. And what happens when you're more comfortable with a, with a strategy or a solution? You can move faster. You don't doubt it and go back and try and look at the numbers again. So let's get on into it. Beginning with the cash value, why are people interested in it, particularly real estate investors in, in using whole life insurance for real estate? Here it is. They're using the cash value like a line of credit, and this can be extremely advantageous because you don't have to deal with institutions anymore. A lot of seasoned real estate investors that have worked with banks, some work with them very successfully, and then sometimes we hear stories where an individual tries to work with an institution and things got delayed and it just caused a lot of frustration, maybe it messed up the deal, whatever it was, this gives you more control, a cash value life insurance policy that is. We've got to build up the cash value first. So the benefits here, we've got our three core benefits to the left, safe, liquid, and tax-free. Tax-free if we do everything properly, meaning we do not trigger a modified endowment contract or another taxable event, but those are your core benefits. And then these three, the three C's we listed out here, compounds. So with a cash value life insurance policy, if you have $1 million in cash value, going back to that example, and you borrow half of it, $500,000, how does that work? Let's assume that $1 million in cash value was earning 4%. That's the net growth rate. We'll talk about that in a minute. But if it's earning 4% and you don't touch it, okay. What happens when you borrow half of it? What do you earn 4% on? the remaining 500,000 you have not borrowed, the full 1 million. So you're still earning compounding, I should say receiving dividends and interest on the entire cash value, even when loans are, are outstanding. So that's very attractive to real estate investors where their money continues to move forward and where they often relate to that, if you have experience with real estate, you may, may be doing this already, is it's not uncommon to see real estate investors have a piece of property that is appreciating over time. 
and they borrow against that property. They've got a line of credit. They take a loan against it to perhaps acquire another piece of property, knowing that they continue to receive appreciation on the property they already own. So they can do that with a life insurance policy, but they've got more control, which is the third benefit there. But then the second one, I don't want to skip over that, is convenience. It is extremely convenient. Anytime I want to access my cash value, there's no qualification. I don't have to submit a new application to be reapproved for a loan or anything like that. You've got complete control. Whatever you have in cash value, if you want to take a loan, you simply request it. The average turnaround time is three to five business days from the, from the day you request the loan until it hits your account. So it's very fast in that respect too, which is nice. And we've got other videos that really go into detail here, but those are some of the benefits there that attracts individuals, in this case, real estate investors, to whole life insurance. All around the cash value too. So transparency, what we're going to hit on here is transparency around rates, then illustrations and numbers. We're not gonna look at illustrations in the next video we will, but this is very important here. And then policy design, specifically around flexibility. This piece is huge. All right, let's begin with rates. What do you see up top? A dividend of 6% and a loan rate of 5%. When you see that or hear me say, you can put your money in a whole life insurance policy and this company is presently paying a dividend rate of 6% and the cost to borrow the loan interest rate is 5%. When I say that, what do you think? Positive 1% spread. That's often what people think. 6% and I can loan at 5 Sign me up all day long. However, it doesn't work like that and it is extremely important to make this very, very clear up front, because what often happens is individuals see or hear this, they take out a policy, then after they've dedicated their money to the product, they then begin to measure the cash value growth. And then they see that the policy is actually producing 4% when we look at the actual cash value growth. Going back to that $1 million example, if you have $1 million in cash value, and you have a 6% dividend rate, but the next year the cash value grows to $1,040,000, your growth was 40,000. 40,000 of a million is what? 4%. So the industry, and you can see this on an illustration too, will use this term IRR, which represents internal rate of return, the net growth rate on a policy. So now, if the net rate is 4%, but you're paying 5%, do you still have that positive 1% spread? No, now you have a negative 1% spread. Or if we know that up front and we're comfortable with it, it's okay. However, what happens if you find out after the fact when you thought it worked like this? Do you feel the same way? No. And another very important point is that you're always going to be negative in the early years. Meaning if you pump in, let's say you pay in $100,000, and the cash value is designed for, for high cash value, we maximized it, still, your year one cash value, when you paid in 100,000, you've got 85 or $90,000 in cash value. I don't care if the dividend rate's 1,000%. If I pay in 100 and I only have 90, I've lost $10,000. That's a negative 10% loss there, or a negative 10% return when I look at it. So important to be aware of that as well. Illustrations and numbers, let's hit on this point because this is the big one. So let's start in the beginning. You've got cash value, going back to that individual, you've got cash value of a million dollars. You've got a dividend rate of 6%, which means you're earning not 6%. Remember the rates, the IRR is important here. So the dividend rate might be 6%, but your internal rate of return, the net may come out to 4% after the company factors in their insurance expenses and such. Meaning at 4%, you saw your cash value grow from $1 million to $1,040,000. That's the actual dollar amount that you received from the insurance company. That is what I like to look at there. What's the net dollar amount I'm getting, especially when I'm comparing it with loans? 
So scenario A, you've got your $1 million in cash value. Let's assume for the sake of simplicity, you pay nothing into the policy at 4%, $40,000 in earnings. A loan, you take a loan of $200,000. We'll assume that the loan rate is 5%, that's $10,000. Are you ahead or are you behind? You're ahead. If we look at the net, net dollar figure there, you're plus $30,000. When I look at what I received from the insurance company and then what I paid them in loan interest. Now, this is often where it stops in many cases because the numbers look good. Very important, especially if you plan on leveraging the policy heavily to look at additional scenarios. What happens if I don't loan 20% of my available cash value, but I loan 50%? What happens now? Well, cash value, 1 million at 4%, $40,000. A loan of 500,000 at 5% is what? $25,000. Am I ahead? Yes, I'm still ahead. Because the earning, earnings were 40,000. Loan interest, 25. I'm ahead $15,000. What happens if I loan $900,000? What's 5% of $900,000? 45,000. What's your cash value growing by? $40,000. Are you ahead or are you behind? Now you're behind. So being able to see the numbers, in my opinion, before we look at a loan transaction, allows us to see what is the impact on my policy, how much am I going to pay in loan interest, and am I going to be in the black or am I going to be in the red? I wanna make sure that I'm not inflicting pain on myself, financial pain, let's refer to it as that, because that's what we don't want to happen. And that often happens, even with very successful and sophisticated real estate investors, that happens due to lack of transparency. We look at the numbers, we say, this is confusing, I can access my cash value and move fast, okay, sounds good, let me do that, and then find this out after the fact. What happens if the loan interest rate is 6%? and the net growth rate is still four, because this can very well be the case, then what would happen? We would just increase the percentage and the total interest we paid. For example, if you looked at scenario B and increased that to 6%, now all of a sudden, you're paying $30,000 in loan interest while you are earning $40,000 in total dividends and interest. But my point is, seeing the numbers, I really prefer to see the dollars, the total dollar amount I paid in loan interest, compared to the total gain. And to see the total gain, the actual cash value growth year over year, this is often not displayed on our annual statement. It's not displayed on our, on our online account. For our clients, we'll run these numbers because we have to. We get the dividends from the insurance company, but not the total growth. Unfortunately, companies in the industry are not there yet. So let's wrap up with this. Policy design, because this is where it all starts. If this isn't set up right, this is the number one source of buyer's remorse. Let's assume you are funding a policy at $100,000 per year. You can design it, design it in this manner, where you can commit to the premium. Here's the most important piece right here. Ask. Ask about the limits. Having awareness on the limits that the insurance company offers, specifically the premium and PUA limits, asking about those will force the agent you are working with to provide that information to you upfront. If you don't ask, it may not be provided. Asking will allow you to get that information and then request additional illustrations as needed. But asking about the limits here is very, very important. We talk about this so, so much because this is, in many cases, the number one source of buyer's remorse. So, if I'm funding a policy at 100 k per year, my premium is $10,000. If I am with a company that allows me to drive it as low as 10%, often we really want to minimize that premium because the premium with most traditional products does not show up in cash value in the first year. It's what I'm committed to. So, if I want to maximize my flexibility, so I'm committed to an amount that doesn't feel like a burden at all, what would you want to do? We would want to reduce the premium. And if I want to reduce the premium, what else is that going to do? 
Well, that's going to allow me to reduce money that's going into the policy that does not show up in cash value in the first year. And then I can get more of my dollars into this PUA, which stands for paid up additions, into this rider that maximizes the cash value. The next piece does depend on the company. Flexible can be added at leisure. A lot of people we work with like to do this where they'll do exactly what you see up on the screen. Commit to 10,000 and then add an additional $90,000 at their discretion. So now I have the ability to pay up to 100K per year, but I'm only billed for 10,000. So it doesn't feel like a burden. And then I add additional funds to my PUA rider, which I immediately see, up, see show up in cash value. I can access that. And then I've got a policy that I'm satisfied with. So when it comes to real estate investors using whole life insurance, transparency is key here. Transparency is important for everyone. But often what comes up is one, the rates. Make sure you have transparency around the rates and how it actually works, especially if you're focusing on your cash value because the dividend rate is not what your policy is actually growing by. The loan rate is what you're paying to the insurance company. Next, illustrations and numbers. Always look at this, so, so important, and look at different scenarios. In our next video, we're going to look at models that display exactly this. But what I like to look at is the exact dollar amount I'm paying in loan interest to the exact amount I'm receiving from the insurance company. And then lastly, this should really be before any loan scenarios, policy design. Is the policy set up in a very flexible manner? So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know if you have any questions at all. Feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, I hope this helps. Thank you so much. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.